Yeah, so the question, how long before synthetic biology will have a meaningful impact on energy production? Basically, the wild card in energy produ production right now is if, if we don't have a carbon policy and an effective carbon policy soon, biofuels are just dead, you know, once again. So it doesn't matter what the scientific breakthroughs are, uh, there's no way to ever beat oil. And in fact, oil's not even an issue right now uh, because of all the new natural gas discoveries. So there's no way economically for a new fuel made out of renewables to ever be able to compete with something an oil company can do without sharp federal regulations and a sharp carbon policy that says you can't keep just taking carbon out of the ground, burning it, and putting it in the atmosphere. Until we recognize the importance of that, there is no biofuel industry. This one. <laughs> Um, as it applies to like people who have like lost limbs or something like that, what do you think would be easier, like designing artificial like synthetic machine parts or designing like whole limbs in these uh, biological manufacturing uh, facilities and then like attaching them that way? So, so the question is, uh, what, what's going to be more effective, uh, remaking a new limb or? mechanically manufacturing one. Well, right now it's clearly mechanical manufacturing. Um, we, we haven't learned what lizards and some other reptiles can do of growing into them. Um, so I, I think that's a ways down the road uh, for any stem cell biology, assuming it's ever going to be possible. Um, but uh, I think it's going to be a combination. In, in fact, what our work shows is the absolute interface between the digital world and the biological world. So maybe the artificial mechanical limb will have real skin uh, made from a local company here that makes skin uh, to grow over the mechanical arm. Um, and you know, a lot of different possibilities. Okay, so with that, I think we should thank Craig again. Three, four,